Hi there, Chemistry 11. So today uh, we're going to look at percent yield and chemical reactions. What you've looked at so far uh, in examining stoichiometry has really been um, ideal case scenarios. You're given um, a mass of some kind of a substance and a balanced chemical equation, and you're expected to calculate the expected yield um, using different ways of finding the chemical amount. Uh, and the values you get are theoretical. They might not actually happen. One reason for this could be, of course, you could have uh, some of the material doesn't react. Uh, another possibility would be that there are side reactions. Um, there's a great YouTube channel, um, Nile Red. You should check it out. Uh, in Nile Red, he looks at this a lot. Um, he starts out with measuring his exact masses of his various reactants. Hopefully they're entirely pure. And then at the end of it, he calculates what he actually got. So your expected masses are based on your um, knowledge of what you started with in chemical amount. And, um, and then the balanced chemical equation. That's the essence of stoichiometry. Uh, but what we're looking at today is uh, what happens when practice meets theory. I thought I'd show you a, a really quick reaction, talk about it really quickly. Um, so let's get that going. So what you're going to see right here is a straight-up combustion reaction. I have charcoal, which we can call elemental carbon, and I have a flame, a heat source from burning methane. Combustion reactions are notoriously inefficient, especially with you, if you're trying to burn uh, big um, molecules like wax or, say, diesel fuel. You get all kinds of side reactions. This is called incomplete combustion. It's a big problem with um, chemical engineers, anyone who's involved in designing engines. It's a consideration. You want your combustion to be complete. If it's not, you're creating a lot of hazardous chemicals, and as well, you're not making full use of your fuel. A common side product, even in a simple reaction like this, would be carbon monoxide, which to top it off happens to be a very dangerous gas. So the simplified reaction under ideal conditions for this case would be that we're making carbon dioxide. Here we go. Don't get the screen too close. This is the same reaction that happens in your wood stove. In actual practice, uh, we've got, um, it's likely that there's going to be some smoke coming out especially if you're burning wood with some moisture in it. And, uh, and the smoke is just particles that don't combust at all. They're just elemental carbon and any kind of minerals that you get inside the wood in general. So things that can't burn, in other words. Here, you're noticing with charcoal that it's burning pretty clean. We're not seeing the room filling up with smoke, which is a good thing because I don't want the smoke alarm to go off. But nonetheless, even in this environment that has um, an excess amount of oxygen and a lot of heat, you can bet that a, a small amount of uh, carbon was not combusting completely. Most of it was being carbon plus oxygen, C plus O2, makes CO2, a nice simple reaction. But some of it we're getting, uh, well, I guess it would be 2C plus um, O2 makes 2CO which is not a desired reaction, um, especially if you're talking not about charcoal, but um, burning in lots of excess oxygen. But if you're talking about, say, diesel fuel um, burning inside a car, you don't want to be making lots of carbon monoxide. It's a hazardous gas. So that's an example of a reaction that could be partially complete. Uh, being said, in a reaction like that, you're normally going to be burning most of it. 
And you can quantify that using a concept called the percent yield. And that's what you are going to be looking at today using a number of different reactions. So with percent yield, what you want to do is you want to use your stoichiometry methods that you've learned so far. State your balanced chemical equation. State your, um, uh, state your, your, your chemical amounts. Calculate your chemical amounts. And use the molar ratios to calculate an expected yield an expected chemical amount for your other substance. You're crossing that mole bridge, right? And then maybe you're going to be expected to take that chemical amount and convert it to a mass. That was the first activity, the first worksheet in the stoichiometry um, chapter we've been covering just now. In this case, what you're going to see is you'll be told, here's what we're starting with, within a balanced chemical equation, and here's the desired product, and here's how much we actually made. So you're going to be able to calculate percent yield as the, um, the actual yield, like what you actually make, divided by what you expect it to make, times 100%. The steps are very similar to the stoichiometry problems you've done so far. I'm going to run through a couple of problems from the worksheet, and you can use this if you want. So here we have the first example is question one. They give you a balanced chemical equation. You're told... Ca, calcium plus Cl, Ca plus Cl2 makes CaCl2. In other words, calcium plus chlorine makes calcium chloride. Fairly straightforward so far. The first thing you want to do is you want to calculate your expected and actual chemical amounts. And in this case, partly, it's a matter of just saying what we already know. We already know that the amount, the chemical amount of calcium is 1.00 moles because they told us. Now we've got to figure out what's the expected chemical amount of calcium chloride. Well, that's going to be N of calcium times the calcium chloride per calcium, which is also 0 0.100 moles. No problem there, right? We're just taking that, multiplying it by 1, and we get that. Notice that I put in 0 0.100 moles of CaCl2. I like to keep all my units in until the end. Now let's look what actually happened, right? You calculate your expected and then you calculate your actual well we're told that in actual fact we only make 106 grams of it um, yeah we only make 106 grams of it sorry that's in the middle there I also by the way stated the molar mass at the start of that do you want molar masses you can calculate themselves your, yourself but you just do a search for a chemical on the internet just, calc just type in the chemical name then type molar mass, it'll give it to you right away. So you can do that if you want. Here, we've got 106 grams is what we made of calcium chloride, divided by 111.0 grams per mole, makes 0 0.955 moles of calcium chloride. Now we calculate our yield like this. Yield equals actual divided by expected times 100%. Well, that's 0 0.955 divided by 0. Point, uh, excuse me, divided by 1 times 100% gives us a 95.5% yield. So that was step two. It's really just a two-step system. You do your regular stoichiometry calculation, and then with the chemical amount that actually gets made with that value factored in, take your expected, uh, take your actual divided by expected, multiply by 100%. Here's the second one. Uh, I did question, actually it's supposed to be question three, not two. The balanced chemical equation for this, you actually have to come up with it. So you're told you're taking some silver nitrate, which is um, a clear solution, and you're combining it with sodium chloride, which is another clear solution. We're going to have a double replacement reaction. We're going to make sodium nitrate, which is still a clear solution, and solid silver chloride, which is precipitate. Falls to the bottom, and you can measure how much you made. It's mass. You could use that mass to calculate chemical amounts. There's really more than one way to solve this problem. I just showed one of the two ways. First, I stated my molar mass of silver nitrate right there. Where did I get it? Off the internet. 170.0 grams per mole right there. Now, given that, I can now state, I can calculate the, the yield, excuse me, the, I'm sorry, you can cal I can calculate 
the amount of silver um, nitrate that I used, there it is, 21.8 grams divided by the 170 grams per mole equals 0 0.128 moles of silver nitrate. Next, I'm going to do my expected silver chloride. Here's where we're using those molar ratios just like in every other stoichiometry problem. The expected silver chloride, chemical amount, N of AgCl, equals the N of AgNO3 times, well, there's that ratio again. But this isn't too hard, is it? Because the ratio is 1. We have 0 0.128 moles of silver nitrate times 1 silver chloride per silver nitrate gives us, we're expecting the same chemical amount, 0 0.128 moles. But that's not the amount that gets made. We have the actual right here. We're going to calculate the actual chemical amount of silver chloride. Again, I went on the internet and I found out the molar mass of silver chloride is 143.3 grams per mole. Then I calculated the, the molar amount, the chemical amount of silver chloride that I made. N of AgCl equals 17.8 grams divided by that 143.3 grams per mole and I get 0 0.124 moles. Close but no scar. Now we calculate the yield. That's your step two in these kinds of problems. That's your NAGCL actual divided by your NAGCL expected times 100%. Well, it's that divided by that times 100% is 96.9%. You could also do this problem by calculating the expected mass of AGCL. In fact, when I did this problem, the first time I did this problem, I wrote on a rough copy answer sheet, that's what I did. You can calculate an expected uh, chemical amount of AGCL, or you can calculate an expected mass. Either way works. Um, but the bottom line is uh, that is how to do these calculations. Do them as a, uh, start them out as a classic stoichiometry problem. Figure out how much you made based on the other information you're given, how much actually got made. And then calculate your yield by dividing your, um, uh, your actual by your expected times 100%. And that's calculating percent yield problems. Fairly short worksheet. And this is all the material for the stoichiometry unit although I'm probably going to put up a review sheet because I think it's so important for you guys to get this stuff. Okay, have a great weekend and bye for now.